Hello and welcome to Mint's Budget Special. I am Shreya Nandi and today we have with us the Chief Economist of India Ratings, Devendra Pant. Hello sir. Welcome to Mint sir. So the first question sir I would like to ask you is that when the interim budget was announced in February, so you know it was said that the kind because of the kind of announcement and the kind of the sheer and the scale of the uh, interim budget was compared to a full year budget. So uh, the focus areas were mostly on the farm sector, on the pension schemes as well as uh, you know on income tax benefits for the middle class sector. So going ahead in NDA uh, 2.0, what do you think will be the focus for uh, our finance minister Nirmala Sitharaman on February 5th? If you look at the past interim budgets, um, it will give you the, the same similar, similar tone. It will give you uh, most of these announcements and all those. But the major difference between interim budget was and the regular budget is in the interim budget you take the vote on account for the spending to be done in next three to three months or four months depending upon when the elections are and when the new government will be able to present present its budget. Uh, now, if you look at uh, the, the the budget which is going to be presented on 5th of July, you are going to see the same thing because some of the some of the steps or the measures which is uh, which were announced in the interim budget some of them have been broadened after that and they will find a find a place place in the in the in the in the budget which is which will be presented on 5th july uh, however one thing which is different now and that is post gst because we have most of the indirect tax uh, indirect tax uh, 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 reform or indirect tax measures which are coming in on every month. So that way the budget has lost some sanctity of the indirect tax as far as indirect taxation is uh, concerned. However, when, uh, for the direct taxes, it is continued to have the same Im importance as it had earlier. So if we, we go going by your question, uh, we did the, the, the in the interim budget it was all those earning up to five lakh rupee were given a given a nil tax benefit. Maybe that is extended to 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 the all taxpayers, or it could be like the minimum limit is increased for all taxpayers. Uh, then then the infra the, the 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 stimulus and all those which was given initially to small and uh, marginal farmer that is extended to others after the government voted in power. So this is what we you can expect in the budget. The markets would be keenly watching and so will the expert will be the fiscal deficit target which was revised to 3.4% of GDP uh, during the uh, interim budget for 2018-19 and uh, the government has said that it will continue with the same target for uh, you know uh, the current financial year. So how do you think uh, you know uh, how feasible is the target considering the uh, you know kind of expenditure that the government will have to be on now, since you said that the uh, income transfer scheme for farmers has also been expanded, uh, extended to all, uh, you know, farmers now, and the government will have to bear a cost of, you know, ninety thousand crore per year. Uh, look, uh, uh, why why people or analysts or the economists or the market watchers are so obsessed with the fiscal deficit? That's a common question which everybody everybody has. So basically what happens, government have some source of revenue, government have some expenditure and whatever is the gap that is the fiscal deficit. Now that deficit has to be financed and the financing has, is, is done by borrowing from the market. So the larger the deficit, the larger the money which will be borrowed from the market that will push up the interest rate in the economy and the interest rate for the other 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 sectors, say for example, the corporate sectors, those who are going to invest, for the household people like you and me, those who are going to borrow for either to to, to buy a house or to buy a, buy a vehicle or, a, or to buy an FM, FMCG goods, the interest rate will remain elevated. That's why it is so important that the fiscal deficit will come down. Now, with what we are seeing, we are seeing a situation, unprecedented situation, which the number came in after the interim budget was presented, that our growth came down faltering to 5.8%. So if we look at the peak to turf journey in the latest episode, that has been the severest in all the quarterly GDP numbers we have. So there has to be some, 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 some impact of, of that. On, on the on the budget which we are going to going to see on on 5th of july all right sir 
another key point that everybody has been talking about is the you know the apparent slowdown in the economy like we saw in the january march quarter that the growth rate was around 5.8% and the economy is certainly slowing so so how do you think uh, you know what steps should the government take to kick start growth in the economy and so that india can be back into the at least 7 to 8 or maybe 9% growth trajectory Uh, look, uh, budget is not not a magic wand by which uh, any finance minister or the prime minister can can turn around the economy and 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 push economy back into into the high growth phase. Now, if as long as we'll continue to do band-aid solution or short-term measure, uh, we will be going away away from the reality, and the the impact will be long-lasting. Uh, so here the problem is we have a, a household sector. which is the post which has a positive saving investment gap so their savings are more than what they invest and unlike general definition of household like it is your house my house it is not that it is anything any production process in the economy if it is undertaken by someone which is neither a public sector nor a private sector nor the government is classified as the household so you have whole amount of large number of SSIs, SMEs, unregistered, unorganized sector that becomes part of household sector, and that sector is in deep trouble. If you look at from the production side, so agriculture becomes a part of part of household sector. We have done something for 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 the 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 farmer or the land owners, but what about the landless agriculture laborers? what about the 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 the, the, the urban, urban urban people of, of the similar type now by this i am not saying go and give out large scale dole out large scale stimulus but we have to be very careful we have to look at what is happening to the household sector and how we can alleviate pressure from the household sector until unless that is done irrespective of whatever amount of of um, stimulus is given fiscal deficit is going to shoot up and you will have ill effects of higher fiscal deficit on 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 interest rate we will see the the the, the traditional response will be there there will be some more um, relief given to to uh, to the to, to to the to the vulnerable sections of the society we'll have more investment coming in for the infrastructure sector all those things are fine but until unless we address the root cause of the problem which is for the growth slowdown any amount of fiscal stimulus will not be able to bring back economy to a sustained growth path thank you so much sir thank you so much for your inputs and now we actually have to wait for july 5th to know what finance minister nirmala sitaraman will actually be announcing for uh, you know the middle class the you know the uh, the rural areas and for all of us uh thanks for watching please stay tuned